Let's see. All right, I'm live. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Stacey Storino. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is the place to go when you are a more mature entrepreneur, you have a business, you understand conceptually that you want to do content marketing, you need to do content marketing, you have to go where the attention goes, and that means content marketing. But you're like, if I'm going to do content marketing, it has to earn its keep. It's got to really increase my business's bottom line or it's a waste of my time and nobody wants that. So that's what my channel is about normally. And certainly during these lives, especially as we get to the end of the trainings and the Q&As, if you have any questions about content marketing and how they can actually bring you the macro conversions that you need for your business to succeed and macro conversions, I look at that as three. Yes, yeah, sure, you're going to increase your social following. That's important for social proof and to build a brand-based community. And yeah, you know, you need to uh, do better lead capture. You need to grow your email list because that's where three quarters of your sales should be coming from, from month to month. And then, yeah, of course, you're going to increase your sales, right? That's every entrepreneur's favorite macro conversion. There are micro conversions too. I teach you about macro conversions, micro conversions, and content marketing that's meant to increase your bottom line all throughout the pre-edited videos that are on my channel, okay? And they're all arranged into nice little playlists. So uh, there's playlists for Instagram Reels. There's playlists for Instagram SEO in general. There's playlists for how to do better content marketing on Instagram holistically. There's playlists for TikTok. I even have a specific TikTok growth playlist where one of my clients, seven-figure client, got to over 820-something thousand subs or followers, I should say, on TikTok. I've been a business coach and more specifically a content marketing coach for eight going on nine years now. I've got thousands of students across the globe, uh, pretty much one on nearly every continent. So I am who I say I am and I can do and I can help you do what I say you can do. So you just got to stick with me. So make sure if any of this sounds cool to you, please make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It'll push out the live stream to more people while we're live that have already subscribed to me. It'll also be more likely to have the replay of this video pushed out to other people on the replay. So if you appreciate what I'm doing, whether it's just today you met me or before, thumbs up. It's kind of like you're putting your tip in the jar for all of the free trainings. It's not for my ego. It's to get this served out to more people. Okay. So today we are going to talk about, if you missed, this is day 17 of 31 days of free training on my channel. So this is all part of the 2022 Entrepreneur Business Reboot, Play, ad, Business Reboot Advice Playlist. That's the link that I have pinned in during the live and on the replay, I'll go back and make sure it's pinned there so that this way you can catch up because every day's training, I'm going to go live every single day in January, 2022, to be clear. And every single live can conceptually stand on its own, but you get the best use out of all this training. If you saw all the other replays that came up until today. So if today is January 17th. We already have 16 videos in that playlist that I linked down below. So, all right, I'm going to greet my students and then we're going to be talking about today's topic, which really is how an entrepreneur truly becomes successful. This is a pathway to success that no one can take from you, but you. So you can be successful if you're the type of person who reads all the books, you take all the courses, you may have listened to some or all of my lives and you go, but Stacy. Uh, I still try and nine and a half times out of 10, I end up self-sabotaging. I end up in my comfort zone. I know I have to do content marketing. I know that I have to have an email list and email them at least once a week. I know that even if I am a beginner business owner and or a beginner at online marketing um, and content marketing, that I have to have at least two sales promotions a month. 
Uh, if I'm not doing that and it's one a month or less, I'm a hobbyist. And you know what? I don't want to be a hobbyist anymore or I never wanted to be a hobbyist. This business needs to earn me money. It needs to help me achieve my goals inside of 2022 and beyond. Well, you got to get out of your own way. So today's training is teaching you how to be more successful as an entrepreneur, okay, and how to really get out of your way if you're like, Stace, no matter what, I usually end up blocking my own blessings. And I don't like that about myself. I acknowledge that as a person plus as an entrepreneur, I tend to do that to myself. So how can I really stop it? What kind of method can you share with me today that would help me to be more effective? So we're going to go into that training in just one minute. I want to say hi to the students that are here live. Hashtag live or hashtag replay as a comment down below. On the replays, you guys know if you've been around here before, I will at least give you a thumbs up and a heart to show you that I see you, that you've been seen, that I care. I have students in like every time zone, so I don't want anybody to feel like they've been left behind. So hey, what's up, Linda George, Ginia Weaver? Hey, Linda Nagoda, good to see you, right? Good to see you. Um, let's see. I want to make sure I greet everybody, and then we're getting right into the training, okay? Hey, Marilyn Roselle, what's up? Hey, Carol O'Neill. Good morning, Miss Linda. Hey, Bridget, Bridget and Darren, Bridget Upcycle Lawson. And I think I've caught everybody that I can see who is live now, but make sure you put hashtag live and hashtag replay where applicable for yourself. So this way I see who's tuning in and when. So now we're going to talk about really how you're blocking your own entrepreneurial blessings today. Could you use some of what I'm teaching you in your personal life too? I suppose that you could. Hold on. I desperately need some hand lotion. Okay. You really could. Oh, and really quickly from my popularity plan students. Yes, it's dropping today. I am just tweaking the captions a little. I just want to make sure I'm 100% pleased with them. So if you're in the Popularity Plan Facebook group already, I'm going to announce there when the link is live. Uh, if you haven't joined it, you can go to Facebook, go to the Popularity Plan, apply to be in there. It's a free group. Otherwise, if you're on the email list, you'll get the email list. Uh, you'll get a quick little email next just saying that the Popularity Plan link is live. All the text done. Everything's done. I just really... I need to be happy with those captions. <laughs> for those that don't know what the popularity plan is, for 37 bucks, you get 15 graphics, in this case for the month of February. And we keep them kind of neutral-esque with a little bit of nod to that month so that no matter what you're branding, you should be comfortable being able to use these. And 15 corresponding social media captions that are templated, fill in the blanks, tweak the language if you feel you need to. And then also for the same 37 bucks, you get four emails that are pre-templated, one assigned to every week in a given month. In this case, we're selling the February Popularity Plan Pack. Um, and that should help you cover your weekly email base for the month, right? You fill in the blanks and you tweak any language and you send, you send them out, or at least you will schedule them if you know how to schedule in your email service provider. Um, and then with the 15 graphics and the 15 corresponding captions, we're helping you cover half of a month's worth of just daily covering that um, that base so that the algorithms keep you active and that you're, uh, you can be found in search. If you're really good at optimizing, you can even make it even better. And you can get a brand-based community who loves you and hangs around. Okay, so that is coming out today. Uh, so when I'm talking about you blocking your own entrepreneurial blessings, what I mean is you've got an inner critic and they are having a really hard time buying into your goals. You could set all the goals in the world. You could make them S-M-A-A-R-T goals on days two, four, I'm sorry, two, three, and five of the last 16 going into 17 days of free trainings. We talk about setting goals that are actual plans uh, that you can concretely use professionally. I guess you could use this in your personal life too if you'd like. On day one, we talked about both the personal and the professional whys that you want to set as a North Star to guide you at least over the course of 2022, okay? 
Um, but you can set all the goals. You can have a real why. You can intellectually tell yourself, I do not want to get to December 31st and look back over 2022 and say, I didn't hit many or any of my goals. I didn't make much, if any, money. I ended up running this as a, a slipshod um, you know, hobby and not like a serious business. I did it again. If you don't want to get there in whole or in part, you really need to take into consideration the technique that I'm going to teach you today so that you can stop self-sabotaging. Um, you know, the urge is always going to be there. That's built into us as humans. So there should be no guilt or shame when you get that urge, especially as an entrepreneur, um, to go out and like, Put it all out there that you have a business, that these are the offerings. Do you have a sale or is it cart open, cart close on things that you sell, right? So you could tell yourself, I'm setting myself up for some rejection because most people aren't even going to take me up on my offer. Um, one thing that we talked about over the last 16 days at times was that probability and statistics, this is nothing personal. If you're like just decent at running your business online and you're just decent about running your business at all, one out of 10 people will accept the offer that you make to them. So if you have a list of 100 people, in theory, you should be getting about 10 sales, right? Uh, you know, one out of 10. The better you get, the better your odds of closing on more people. And maybe sometimes per 10, you get two to three of them that say yes, right? So there's only nowhere to go up. But when you are first starting, when you have proof of concept, when you understand your ideal customer and you are selling them what they want and what they need, because sometimes you're trying to sell stuff to them that you think they need or that you believe that they need. And they're like not even looking for it or not enough of them are for you to really make a business out of it. There's a lot of work that you have to do to work out all the kinks in the pipeline of your business and to get to proof of concept where it's not just family and friends that are buying from you. That's not true proof of concept. True proof of concept is when one or more strangers a week raise their hands and say, here's my credit card, take my money. You don't have proof of concept if you can't do that ever or only ever, right? So of course, you're laying yourself out there for a lot of potential rejection and it's understandable that you would feel very uncomfortable. Hi, I am Chicken Swell. What's going on? Thanks for joining us. Um, it would be very understandable that you would not want to like be first online to get rejected. Um, and nobody wants you to be obnoxious and nobody wants you to be arrogant or aggressive. But by putting yourself out there in a tasteful, polished and professional way every single day on behalf of your business, you're open for business every single day. And it's, it's you know, there's no reason to feel like you need to be assertive on behalf of your business, not aggressive, okay? So aggressive and assertive is a very fine line. You can Google a ton of articles that can show you where that line is. Um, if you're a student of mine in Bravery University, yes, there is a section where we cover that and we talk about it from a professional's point of view. Um, but when you have an inner critic and it's trying to keep you inside the playpen of your comfort zone, God forbid you toddle outside of that playpen and you trip and you get hurt. It's trying to protect you from being hurt, being killed, or anything in between. It's a survival mechanism. That's why I'm saying your inner critic's always going to be there. Minus a lobotomy, it's not going away. The fact that your inner critic is there and it's a survival mechanism because humans are mammals and mammals are animals and we're all trying to survive. Um, you shouldn't feel bad or poisonous or feel like it's a downer that the inner critic is there. The first thing you need to do when you're worried about blocking your own blessings is that you recognize the fact that it's not necessarily the most negative thing in the world that you have a negative Nelly that's trying to hold you back. If you understand it for what it is, you kind of take some of the drama and trauma out of it, okay? And if you're a real emotional person, this is something that you really need to do. And you need to say, this is just a survival mechanism. I'm trying to help myself. 
not get hurt, not get killed, anything in between. So sure, I've set up my personal and professional why like day one in this coaching session. And sure, like days two, three, and like I believe five, I've set up goals that are actual plans for my business in this case and largely contained inside of 2022. It's nice to have long-term goals. Sure, I could set those two, but I'm all about on January 17th, I am all about going, I am not getting to December 31st and looking back and saying, I failed my business again, right? So just having that inner critic and understanding what it is and not being melodramatic about that helps. That's kind of half the battle. The You know, you have the right to be concerned that the inner critic is trying to hold you back in to your comfort zone. Um, and again, as an entrepreneur, you're going to get more rejection than if you were just a garden variety everyday person, um, employed or not employed. Um, that person's going to get far less potential for rejection than you will. Every post you put out, every live that you do, every email that you send, every time you create a product listing and you put it on your website, you are setting yourself up for nine out of 10 people that ever see that to go, nah you know, at best or ew, at worst, although usually the worst thing doesn't happen, right? So a coward dies a thousand deaths, a hero only once. So you have the right to acknowledge the fact that there is an inner critic and that there is a very deeply ingrained tendency to engage in self-sabotage, to block your own blessings, especially when it comes to your entrepreneurial life. In fact, if you're the type of person that personally You've usually, nothing and nobody's perfect, but darn, you are proud of yourself as a family member, as a mother, as a father, husband, wife, significant other. You're a really good roommate. You're a really good friend, neighbor. You work during the day at your day job. You're just like, you're a great employee. But when it comes to your side hustle or where applicable, your full-time business, you're acting like a totally different person and you don't know why. What I just said strikes at the heart of why there's such a disparity between who you are personally and who you are professionally, because professionally, you are going to face more odds of rejection than you ever would personally. So you're really pushing yourself into more of a calculated risk. It's very risky behavior to be an entrepreneur. But if you're smart about how you run your business, the products, the branding, the marketing, if you're smart about these things, then you're really taking calculated risks. And once you start acknowledging that, that can tamp, tamp down that inner critic. But let's talk about how we can greatly decrease the odds of your actually going through and engaging in self-sabotaging behavior as it relates to your professional goals that are necessary to live your entrepreneurial why especially in the year of 2022, right? What's going to allow you to more often than not keep moving forward, changing your life personally and professionally for the better. So the question here, and this dovetails into the technique that I'm going to teach you today, um, is how to sell that inner critic on the odds of your achieving your entrepreneurial why for 2022, um, how to convince that inner critic that the odds of your being successful in 2022 is actually great. Like how to sell that inner critic on the fact that your goals are really plans and not just wishes and that your goals are really more believable and achievable than not. So how do you do that? So you're entrepreneurs and odds are, if you're watching this, you already have a business up and running, right? Hi, Daniela. Good to see you, Daniela Waterhawk. Hello, Susie B. How to do that? So this is how I would recommend that you do this, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you've been in business even for a minute. You're going to really appreciate this. And it is, I want you to take that inner critic when she starts complaining and she's worried. And if you're a dude or identify as a dude, read in he. Pretend that she's a customer at your shop, whether you have a brick and mortar, you have an online, whatever. And you're like, you're the consultant, you're there helping them, right? Um, I seriously want you to think about it this way. 
it's your job in real life, whether you have a brick and mortar online or both, it's your job to sell people uh, onto accepting the offers that you make to them. Okay. Whether you have products, services, a bit of both, it's all digital. It's not, it's a mix of both. I don't care what your offerings are. People aren't buying your products, let's say, as much as they are accepting the offers that you're making to them to get out of pain and into pleasure, right? So in everyday life, if somebody's like, well, I don't know, or I have a bunch of questions and I'm really concerned and is there a, a money back guarantee or anything like that, it's your job as the entrepreneur to sell that person. You're not being sleazy. You're being honest. You're selling that person on how there really is little to no risk and the quality of you know your offerings and that this will help solve their problem um, address their main pain point or satisfy their desire, right? They're buying something to make them feel better. They're buying something for fun. You know, this, this offering of mine will address your passion point, if you will. So when you have an inner critic and they're like, well, I don't know, I don't know that you should do this. You don't want to look stupid. The last time you did something, you got a goose egg when you ran a sale well, I don't know. I don't want you to get hurt and I don't want you to waste any more time and I don't want you to feel foolish, right? The inner critic has their concerns. They don't want to accept the offer of taking you up on like banding with you so that your subconscious mind, the inner critic, joins the conscious mind, the one that'll show up to all my trainings free and paid, the ones that'll read every book and take everybody else's training, the one that will do all the work, but the inner critic isn't sold on the offer of actually having a successful business or a more successful business than the one you might have had last year, right? So it's your job to sell that inner critic, if you will, on the concept of success and how it's supposed to play out in your life, both professionally and personally, right? Because if we do well professionally, usually that helps us personally too, right? Like money doesn't solve every last problem in life, but it can solve a lot of them. <laughs> um, and if you feel successful and you finally achieved what you wanted to as an entrepreneur and you set new goals to take you higher in the meantime so you don't stagnate, that's going to give you a lot of pride and a lot of mental and emotional satisfaction that money just can't buy. Right. So it's not all about the money. And of course, you want to help people get out of pain and into pleasure or get more pleasure in their life through your offerings. You know, like I've said before, you have a moral obligation to show up in life and help people through your talents and share your knowledge, whatever is applicable to the offerings that you're going to make using the business model that you're using. So remember, Kind of looking back at the last 16 days worth of training, as we're in day 17 live, if you make your goals believable, right? They are S-M-A-A-R-T goals. You've done all that work. For every goal, you have set timetables and mile markers to judge progress, right? Um, you've gone through the five W's and the H, right? So definitely you need to like go to the link down below and catch up if that's what you need to do. But when you set believable goals, your subconscious mind is already more inclined to be able to process those goals as more achievable. Um, you've wrestled with them or wrestled with them so much by getting those plans together and getting very granular and strategic about it that your subconscious mind starts to not only get bored about the the goal, because you're doing all this work and I'm no longer as excited and I'm kind of settling into it and getting grounded and centered with it. And I can kind of see where all this can go if we could just follow through. Then the inner critic's less likely to say much of anything at all, right? And then you stay the course, achieving one goal at a time. And I believe this is day five where we talked about the goal keeping ceremony, just five, 10 minutes a day of keeping your finger on the pulse of the goals that you've had and all the tiny little things that you scratched off your to-do list for that day, maybe the baby step goals and you celebrate that and your inner critics like, okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Um, follow through is our thing now. Okay. I get it. I I've seen you do it for a day, a week, a month. All right. All right. Over time, it gets easier. 
and and we're not a total screw up because I see that we are definitely celebrating baby step goals and even short term goals that we've achieved along the way. And we're kind of making progress towards the overall bigger vision goals that keep us in step with our personal and professional why, especially for 2022. I'm starting to get less worried. I am the grooves in the wood of success, kind of getting deeper, kind of more of them. All right, maybe I won't come out to play and yell and scream so much, right? Because that daily goal keeping ceremony continues to engrave believability uh, into your daily mindset until you're practically bored with what might have a day a week a month ago used to scare you silly, consciously and subconsciously. So now let's get into like a more specific technique where if your inner negative Nelly starts really whining about how hard or how painful working on a particular goal will be, how uncomfortable you'll be, how dumb you are at tech, me, I think this all the time, right? I'm human. I have an inner critic, believe me. And I have PTSD legit too. And that doesn't help either. So I'm telling you, I'm not pointing fingers and I've had to do exactly what I've taught you throughout this series. But this, <laughs> this technique I'm going to teach you, I sometimes really have to sit with it and do it on myself. Okay. So, all right. So if your inner negative Nelly starts whining about how hard or painful or just how uncomfortable it's going to be to go through yet another learning curve, why can't everything be easy, right? You specifically sell that inner critic on your Y and your S-M-A-A-R-T goals and how accomplishing these goals will help you to improve your life once you're living more in harmony with your 2020 Y. Now, your negative Nelly is going to hear that and say, yeah, whatever. And they're going to continue to throw down. You're still going to have the willies. You're still going to be nervous. You're going to suddenly go and mop the floors for the millionth time because busy work. Well, I'm not just sitting here. I'm keeping busy. I've had all sorts of students through the years, self-sabotage, all different kinds of ways. But as your inner critic continues to object to your sales piss pitch about success, especially as an entrepreneur, you sell to that inner critic. You reinforce within yourself not only the awesomeness of your why and the believability and the achievability of your goals, but now you're going to think about, let's say that personal and professional why. Let's join it together for what you want to see in 2022 as you're going to be more of a success and as your business is going to be more of a success. What living in harmony with that why, with that overall purpose for yourself in this year would look like employing all five senses as you make your pitch or you paint this mental picture of like what living in harmony with your entrepreneurial why would be. So more specifically, what does that look like? Well, you're going to ask yourself, what does it look like when I'm living in harmony with my why, when I'm running a business in this example and I am not shying away from things. Some days will be harder than others. But what does it look like that I actually have a business? I actually have a website that's live with offerings that people could buy. I actually have, even if I'm a beginner, the top two social media platforms that are most important to my niche. I'm putting up a post on both of those every day. I might even have a post scheduler or an auto posting system that can handle it for me. And I'm feeling pretty comfortable and pretty accomplished with the fact that I have a successful business and I'm getting sales every single day because honestly, Macy's, Estee Lauder, fill in the blank, they are ready to take everybody's money every single day, whether they think to go to the website or the sales pages, or they see the posts and they have a direct ask and they follow through, or they see some other posts that might have tip tricks and techniques in them. And they go, ooh, and I want, and then they go to that site and they shop it. What does it look like when you have a business up and running in real life and digitally? What does that look like? Paint that picture. What does it feel like when you're living your why? You're confident that you have a business. It's not how, it's not if you're going to make money today. How does it feel to know 
that it's just a question of how much money you're going to make today. Because just like any other business, brick and mortar or otherwise, you're open for business every day. And if you are working your content marketing and later on when you have the money and you know you have proof of concept, people who are not your loved ones alone are buying from you and you don't get a ton of returns, you know you've got the kinks worked out in the pipeline of your business, could only take a couple of weeks and you're there, right? Then you might be um, spending money on ads, but you can afford to because you're taking that out of the net profit of your business. What does that look like? What does that feel like to know that you can run ads and you can do that organic content marketing and people are seeing it and at least one out of 10 people are being receptive? And how does it feel? And what does it look like in your mind's eye to see more people joining your brand-based community? They're subscribing, they're following, they're fans. How does it feel that every day you're going to get more people on your email list? In the beginning, it might be one or two people, but eventually you look back over the course of a month and you know that your email list is growing by 50, 100 people or more a month. How does that make you feel to know that you are capturing leads and acting like a business person. How does it feel to like hit that send button and you're getting exposed to say a hundred people on your email list and 10 people plus or minus maybe one are going to take you up on your offer. How confident do you feel? How much better do you feel about your life when you're running your business, dare I say it, for real? And then also, what would entrepreneurial success maybe smell or taste like? What does it sound like? And if you're like, I don't understand how I would work those senses into things, don't laugh. So if I think of my personal and professional why for 2022 being successful, it, it you know, it'll look like all the things I just described, right? Um and it'll also look like I'm I'm somewhere tropical, like palm trees and all. I would love to be able to get down to Florida this year, right? I have family in Boca Raton and I can afford to go. I'm making plenty of money. I'm paying down my debt. I'm feeling good. I can feel the warmth of the summer sun on my skin and, and know that I don't have to sit in an office. I, I, I've got some flexibility right? I can feel the soothing water that I might be swimming in. I can smell the saltiness of the sea and like the freshness of the air. Like that's what entrepreneurial success feels like to me when I'm really doing it up style, right? And like I'm tasting maybe a truly resplendent like Mai Tai cocktail, the perky little umbrella floating around in it. And I, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing the dings go off on my mobile device that says somebody just signed up to my email list or somebody just purchased my payment gateway is making another mass payment to me today. And I sit there in that multi like sensory imagery and it feels very real to me because the more senses I layer and the more facts of what success looks like to me personally and professionally simultaneously, yeah, intellectually, consciously, I go, that's really fun. But subconsciously, I'm starting to play Jedi mind tricks on that inner critic because they're feeling like, wow, I could all but taste it as I sit here now. I can all but smell it. I can all but see it and feel it. Oh, I'm almost there, right? So like that's training in your reptilian brain to kind of also join with you when you ground and center and sit with all that you're working on um, in entrepreneurial life. You cannot treat your subconscious mind as the same thing as your conscious mind. And you can't just forget that you have a subconscious. It's got a job to do and you can't hate it for doing its job. You just have to work with it. Does that make sense? Uh, put down below live or on the replay if that makes any sense to you. Now, so you want to go over your goals, both long-term and short-term, especially as contained in 2022. They're all probably necessary in conjunction with one another to achieve your ultimate why-based goals personally and professionally for 2022. 
every goal, long or short term, are like rungs on the ladder that you need to climb to get to the top of the ladder where December 31st, 2022 is, and you say, did it, right? Or if I didn't hit every goal, I hit almost every goal. And there might have been real legit reasons to hold me back on one or two things, but I'm almost there, right? So, or don't put any filters on it. Just say you did it all because you could, okay? You could um, hit every one of your goals, right? So if while you sell to your inner con inner critic, the concept of success, um, they look up and they're just like, mm, I'm still not hundred percent sure. I would pretend that this inner critic is like at a direct sales party. And they're looking up from the order that you're ringing up for them. You're selling them on success. And so you're filling out that order form and you're going through it with them. You want to make sure all that information's accurate. You want to make sure that they see what the total is. And if they look up and calculate like what all this hard work is going to cost them, right? And now they start to panic. But that means, Stacey, that I have to, if I bought trainings of yours, I have to finish them and implement them. If I didn't buy trainings of yours and I'm so inclined, then I get them and I take them and I implement them. Or if I get the popularity plan for February when that pack launches later today, that I actually go ahead and I use them. Uh, you know, that I have to do whatever other things I have to do to get the big wheel turning on my business and keep it turning every day for content marketing, Right and for selling, and for customer service, and for tweaking and updating my website, my social, covering my daily musts. Once I'm an intermediate to advanced business owner, I'm probably publishing to YouTube at a minimum of once, one video a week, at a minimum, two to three to be more competitive. So I've got all this work to do. It's going to cost me time, money, bandwidth, <clears throat> and even if my business is profitable enough that I can reinvest out of my net profit uh, to independent contractors, to paid solutions, to trainings, books, software, coaching, you know, um, you know, other pieces of software, things that I might need physically in my office to help me do things. That's all going to cost me time, money, bandwidth, energy. I don't know, Stacey, it's going to cost me, right? If someone's sitting there at a direct sales party and they see the total and they realize what it's going to cost them, uh, what I did, because I was in the top 5% of the company I was with years ago when I did direct sales, I would cross sell them. So I'm not only cementing in the fact that what they're getting, they said they needed or would solve those pain points or it'd be the perfect gift or whatever. I might even cross sell them on something else to add to that order that complements what they're already going to buy. So like, I'm going to tell you how this works for your inner credit in a minute, inner critic in a minute. You're selling the person in the direct sales scenario on the fact, oh, my tech guy might need a code. Oh, okay, no, that's something else. Um, you're selling them on how the overall set of what they bought or what they're about to buy will do for them or their loved one if they're buying a gift. Like you really sell them on the fact that they need the whole thing in order to be successful for themselves or giving a gift, right? And you might even add something else in to say, if this is your concern, you know, about having time to get things out to cover your daily base, um, well, guess what? You know, you, there are auto poster solutions like later, I'm not going to drop an affiliate link or anything, but there's later. Um, if you know what Hootsuite was, I used to recommend Hootsuite years ago. I do not now. I would recommend later. And they have like currently a forever free plan that up to a certain amount, they will post on one or more platforms. You know, you can plug in so much that they will allow you to use them as an auto poster and auto scheduling solution for. You can get a certain amount of that free. So if you're like worried, your inner critics, like you're never going to be able to eat the whole thing. You're never going to be able to do the whole thing. You say to that inner critic, but there's free solutions out there even or freemium. And if I can afford to pay to unlock more in this case with later, I will because I can cover more bases more faster and more effectively by doing that. So I can keep that big wheel turning with once I get over the initial learning curve of later, 
I can keep the big wheel turning even better uh, and even more. And it's going to get even easier after a couple of days to a week of working with it. So you're cross-selling that inner critic. If it keeps coming up with, well, you know, this is going to be hard. This is going to cost time. This is going to cost money. Anything that you buy on behalf of your business, your tax expert should help you write all of it off or depreciate whatever equipment you buy that might be really expensive, write off things against income in whole or in part. So you go, yeah, it might cost me. But then again, like any course you buy from me and or, or almost anyone else, double check with your tax expert. You should probably be able to write off all or most of that expense against your income so that you're either getting a refund or you're owing less once you get to be super successful. It's not if you're going to pay taxes, it's how much. So you're always about shrinking your tax burden. If you're buying equipment to help you knock out physical products more, sure, you can have a tax expert help you depreciate that equipment against the cost, uh, against your income. But it's also like, okay, there's a learning curve. But when I'm done forevermore, you know, in theory, this equipment will be with me. I'll repair it. I'll maintain it. I'll do what I have to do, but it's going to help me get out more product, right? Um, does this make sense? So there may be some extra cost and your inner critic's right, um, but once you've mastered the learning curve, you're done. Or if there's a quick tweak or update, you're like, whatever, boom, got that knocked out, right? So it might cost you blood, sweat, tears, money, time, discomfort, but if you focus on the benefits of what happens to you and your business when you break on through to the other side, but you don't just brush it off or just say, well, I have to, it's like you're really communicating with a concerned customer or a potential customer, this inner critic. When you communicate with them enough and you address their concerns enough and you paint this multi-sensory picture of what they get on the other side of it, the reptilian brain calms down, the music soothes the savage beast. Um, and I do have another book to recommend to you guys. And I'm not going to drop an affiliate link or anything. And many of you might have heard of this book or read this book. You can go to the library and get this book or whatever. It's called The Power of Positive Thinking by Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, P-E-A-L-E. -E. Um, and that might help you if you have a particular stumbling block against success. All right. So Ginia says that makes sense. Thank you. Kim says that makes perfect sense. Bridget says makes sense. Lisa Garrett. Good morning, Miss Lisa Garrett. What's up? Kim Arnold says it seems like constantly selling our inner, inner critic on our plans will help us keep our, our, our shy in front of our, our why in front of our mind and hold us accountable. If we can answer its questions, we're making a good decision. That's true. Now, for those of you that don't need to, on the regular, your inner critic's kind of there, but you've got this on lock. I'm not trying to assign you more busy work. If it ain't broke, don't fix. But for those of you who are like, I'm always like, I can know up here, but somehow in here, I keep getting a stumbling block. Yeah, that's normal to experience. You're not stupid. You're not wrong. You're not dumb. This isn't like a message from God that you shouldn't. This is something that has a lot more to do with biology and body chemistry than you think. Um, you know, uh, this isn't me being woo-woo with you. Uh, I, I Listen, I'm not saying there's no such thing as a law of attraction, uh, you know, and I, I do believe in God and I know that God helps, uh, God's, the saying is that God helps those that help themselves. What I'm saying here is very not woo-woo. It is knowing and understanding how you as a human, because humans are mammals and mammals are animals, all animals have to some degree the ability to rationalize or draw conclusions based upon, you know, the input of its surroundings. Um, you know, so that's your conscious mind as the human being animal that you are, right? But your, your conscious mind, rather, your analytical brain can handle it. You know, some of you are just like, I know I got to get better with the analytical brain. I got to get better at the training and the discipline and all that. And that's great. But if you find that you're still stumbling, this is why, because your reptilian brain, kind of the mental part of you, there's, well, the emotional part of you, mental is all the analytical part and the conscious mind. 
the subconscious mind, the reptilian brain, like the more emotional, you know, part of you, that's how you tame that. Because if you just think that the, that handling the intellectual end of things is a panacea and a cure-all, very rarely is that going to work or that going to work all the time. So if you notice that you are constantly self-sabotaging anyway. You've done all the training. You've heard all these things. You know all of these tips, tricks, and techniques. You've read all the books. You've watched every video. You have scraped YouTube dry. You have scraped Google dry. You know what? Even if that were somehow true, and we all know that that's not, but let's just pretend it was. Yeah, you might have over-delivered for your analytical conscious mind, your intellectual brain, but your emotional like brain or reptilian brain, music has to soothe that savage beast. So when you are dealing with the emotional issues that are coming up, oh, I'm going to fail. It's going to hurt. Oh, it's going to cost me so much money. Oh, it's going to cost me so much time. Oh, all these extra tools. But when you're like, hey, 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 shh, that's okay. Imagine what it's like when we're on the other side of this. It's okay. It's okay. Like you would pet like a scared animal. You don't just tell the animal too bad and you go yeet it over there because that probably won't work, right? So like this is dealing with the conscious and the subconscious in a more holistic se uh, sense, right? Because minus a lobotomy, you ain't getting rid of one or both. So you, you kind of have to get good when you know emotionally you will block yourself you have to get good at like soothing that reptilian brain. So, and it's not just rationalization. You'll notice um, it, it is petting it and soothing it and acknowledging it and then painting like this multi-sensory picture so that it goes, Oh wait, this, this concept of success isn't so abstract anymore. It's not so foreign and over there and kind of other it's like, I could see it. I could see it. So when you see it, a lot of times you can be it as the saying goes, but this is less woo woo and just more common sense and human like biology. All right. So I have another group that I have to be in at 10 o'clock. Um, and that's the funnel dynasty group. So that's my paid one on group coaching session with a, uh, every week or most every week and the course that goes with it. So tomorrow, what we're going to deal with, for those that are happy to tune in tomorrow, we are going to talk about um, something that's more um, systems driven, because uh, I'd be remiss if I kind of ignored that. Um, so we're going to be talking about how to control your calendar to improve your life. You could use it personally, but also professionally. And in fact, in most cases, when you're a more mature entrepreneur, you are juggling too many flaming torches. Even if you're advanced and you have a big old team and your team's pulling its weight for your business, you're still juggling what you still have to do on behalf of your business. Even when you're advanced, you're a six figure business and beyond the way I look at it, um, the way I batch my students, um, you know, you still have a personal life. You'll probably have a family if you're a more mature entrepreneur, uh, watching this. Um, if you're like the average student or average viewer I have, you're older and you you probably have some sort of nuclear family. You might have some, you know, engagement with your extended family. It's a lot of stuff to juggle. So tomorrow we're going to talk about a way to blend your personal and professional responsibilities so that you've got a calendar system, paper, electronic, or both, where you know, you are naming it and claiming it day to day, week to week and month to month. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Are you guys otherwise in a good place right now? Let me know. Again, for my Funnel Dynasty students, I have, I will be in your group at 10 and I'll also have a cool announcement. So that'll be cool. Yes, thank you, says Jan. Cool. Make sure that you guys are catching up with the, oh, you know what? Also, I released a YouTube video that's pre-edited. Uh, so I'm just going to drop the link to that really quickly. For those who missed today's like 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time pre-edited pre video release, 
Um, that is part of, it's like a coaching branding basic series, but it doesn't matter if you're not a coach or a course creator, you could still get a lot of value out of that video. So that video, I put another link in here. Uh, and oh, there goes the porno link. That's hilarious. Okay. Uh, so make sure you check out the pre-edited video that I dropped earlier today, because that's going to help you with your brand creed, your brand slogan, whether you're a coach or a course creator or not. Some of my students are coaches and course creators. Some are not. I'm telling you that even if you're a handmade business, you could still get, or otherwise a products-based business, you could still get a lot of value out of that video. Um, so that's the second link that I dropped. Popularity plan will drop later today. You'll get an email. You're in the group. Uh, for popularity plan on Facebook. I'll announce it there first. All righty. So if everybody's in a good place, I will talk to you later. Bye.